to part two of this two-part speech that I gave at my young adults ministry. If you want to know more about what this speech kind of started from and why I'm saying it, go to part one of this. I will link a little thing up here for you guys to click on and go straight to that video if you haven't already seen it. In this one, I talk about the truth about Christ in the church, aka what I have learned from my baptism testimony that I shared in part one. So without further ado, here's part two. Um, and so tonight, I want to share with you guys four things that I learned um, from that story since and how I've kind of applied it to my life now. Um, and hopes that it encourages you in case you've ever been hurt by church leadership or felt misunderstood or isolated by anyone in church leadership. Um, or if you've ever had doubts about God, too. Um, because those are very real feelings um, and very valid. Uh, so, all right. So the first thing I learned about the church, I'll be sharing two from each. Um, so the first two things I learned about the church from that whole experience was that the church cannot control your salvation, only God can, and that God's will for the church is actually so beautiful. Um, and so the first point is that the church cannot control your salvation, which is a hard lesson that I had to learn the hard way, um, but a very valuable one. Um, so in Ephesians 2, uh, 2 verse 8 through 9 specifically, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And I love this scripture because it emphasizes that it's a gift. It's a gift from God that is not locked up in this tower that you have to go climb. And it's it's not this far away thing. It's obtainable. Um, or you can you can grasp, you can grasp it if you go after it. Um, because it's waiting for you to receive. And um, my situation of having it withheld gave me an appreciation for the fact that it's not withheld from us at all. Um, that's very far from the truth. And that's the truth about the church, is that the truth about the church is the church cannot control that. So that's good news, um, <laughs> because it's all in God's hands, and he has already given it to you. And... Um, this second verse is Romans 10, which says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And this scripture holds so much power because it's no longer about to see other people controlling it. It's simply about you and God. If your heart, mind, and soul are in love with him, if you're ready to accept that, that is more than enough. He sees that. And no one can keep you from that or take you away from it. Um, it's yours. And so that's something I treasure from that experience. And the second thing about the church that is true is that God's will for the church is beautiful. So while I went through a really terrible experience with my old church, I've seen so many more beautiful things come from churches. Um, and so the church was meant to be a place where people could come together to lift each other up. That was God's will for the church. It's a man-made institution, um, but it was made to bring believers together in community to do incredible, loving things um, like having intentional shepherding or mentoring couples, people who just do life with you and who want to get to know you um, and lift you out of very uncomfortable situations and um, I've been a part of ministries like children's ministry where you're teaching kids about how valuable they are and how much they're loved um, or even celebrate recovery and watching people fight things that have nothing to do with their spiritual health but their mental health um, and walking through that together as Christians it's huge so the church is beautiful, and that is God's will for the church. It's for us to love one another, to be together in community. And he uses imperfect people to do those things all the time, which is a double-edged thing because I think with my situation, there were imperfect people, but they weren't willing to see that. In their head, there was just this pride of, we are doing things this way, and this is the right way, when it wasn't God's way. 
Um, but on the other hand, I've met so many people who were imperfect, but their stories changed my whole life because of their imperfection. And it made them human and it made them relatable. Um, and that's very transformative in the grand scheme of things. And so those are the two things I learned about church from that whole experience. And those are the truths about church. And then I learned two things about Christ in the process as well. Um, the first thing I learned is that he is stable when everything else is not. And I also learned that his pursuit for us surpasses all understanding. <coughs> so the first thing uh, on him being stable, I was reading through Hebrews. I just finished. Highly suggest if you haven't read it. It's so good. Um, but in Hebrews 13, it said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And I absolutely love that because there can be so much inst like instability happening. Life can be extremely chaotic and unpredictable. Um, but we know one thing for certain. If it's that one thing you're holding on to to stay alive even, um, he will always remain the same. He will always be stable in a safe place to run to. Um, and because that's true, Satan will do anything he can to corrupt that vision of Christ. And we have to be aware of that. Um, which makes the church a perfect target because unfortunately, especially if you don't really know a lot about the church or who God even is, it's easy to mesh together the way the church treats you with the way Christ is going to treat you, which was my problem. They were rejecting me, so I felt like God would. They were telling me one thing, so I felt like God felt the same way about me, and that's so far from the truth. Um, so it's important to realize that a fault of a church is not a fault of your relationship with God. If a church falls, you can still have stability if you're putting your faith in Christ, because he's the one who's a part of it all. He's the one building all of it. And the second thing I learned is that Christ's pursuit for us surpasses all understanding. Um, he was pursuing me long before I even recognized that. Um, but showed on the bus. Like, I wasn't even thinking about God at the time. I was probably thinking about lunch for that day or how tired I was or the boy I was dating. I don't know. Like, just ridiculous stuff. It doesn't even matter now. And he totally spoke to me in this moment where I was not prepared. I was not, like, anticipating his response. It just came. And that's how God works. He's going to come when he wants to. And he's going to come when it matters most, when it will speak to you the most. Um, and so... Yeah, he was pursuing me long before I even recognized it. And he pursues us because of his love for us. Um, a verse I really love is the one in Ephesians where it talks about how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ for us. Um, because it shows that his love is in four dimensions. We're in a third dimension. His is in the fourth. Like, he is not even on our level. We have to get on his level. We can't because of how big it is, how unfathomable it is, how incredibly just consuming his love is. We will never understand it. And as somebody who loves to figure things out and know why things work and come to a conclusion, you can't with that concept. We can either let that be our greatest confusion or our greatest joy to know that nothing here on earth will ever match or compare. So whether you've lived in an absence of love for a very long time in your life, know that his love is so much better, that you haven't even begun to experience how much you're loved yet. Or if you've experienced so much love and joy, you know that feeling, like you, you know what love feels like. Well, there's an even greater love, and that's always great news. Like, no way, this feeling I'm feeling, you're telling me it's like up here? Um, no, it is. Yahweh, it's so real. Um, it's beyond our comprehension, and that's great news because it's something we'll always be chasing and we're never going to get tired of. He'll always top you. Um, and so in conclusion, that is what I have learned um, so far. And of course, I didn't come to these revelations when I was like little and these things were happening to me. It's taken years of healing and therapy and dealing with... Um, there's trauma left behind from those experiences and forgiving the church um, for what happened. But I'm here now, 
four acres is awesome, which is great news. Um, you're at a good church, people. Um, and um, seeing the beautiful side made it much more beautiful because I know what it looks like when it's ugly. All right, guys, that is all for part two. You made it. Woo! Thank you so much for watching if you watched the whole way through. Thank you again for being a part of this journey for me and learning how to speak publicly about my faith and teach others about who God in the church really is. And as always, if you guys want to see more about my personal relationship with God and what he's teaching me, go follow me on my Instagram at mygodmoments. I hope you guys have an amazing week and that you feel uplifted, motivated, and encouraged to get out there and profess your faith as well and share your story because everyone's got a story. And thank you for, again, for listening to mine. I'll see you all next time. Bye.